Our guest this morning in studio is the former Lubbock City Manager, Leanne Dumball. And uh, she, at 11.30 this morning at 916 Main Street, I think that's the right location. That's correct. Uh, will announce that she is a candidate for the Republican nomination to the Lubbock County Commissioner's Court. Good morning, Leanne. Good morning. How are you? It's unusual to be back here again. It's been some number of years. I imagine. Longtime Lubbock City Manager, you took over as City Manager at a really, really tough time. Let me let me recall for the folks just when it occurred. Uh, Hurricane Katrina had just devastated the Louisiana coast. We were bringing in hundreds of refugees uh, or displaced persons or whatever the correct term this week is. The correct terms change from day to day. But anyway, they were they were bringing in people and housing them out at uh, the uh, then-closed Reese Air Force Base. And uh, you were caught in the middle of that uh, as an assistant city manager. It wasn't long after that, thanks to your performance uh, during those tough times, that the city council uh, uh, decided to name you acting city manager. Uh, tough job? It was an unusual job. It was certainly more difficult because I had only been in the Lubbock area for about a year, so I didn't know all of the local officials yet, but I certainly met all of them during the event when we brought, I think it was about 850 evacuees. Uh, and I was serving as the acting city manager while our then city manager was on vacation in San Antonio. Vacation. I, that's a, I'm going to write that down because I've heard other terms, but vacation. Well, that works for today. Uh, that works for today. Lou Fox was uh, the uh, city manager at the time. And uh, so you took over in when as city manager? When were you named city manager? In September. September of that year. And you served until when? 2013. 2013. I had the pleasure of serving four years uh, uh, as a city councilman with uh, uh, Mrs. Dumball serving as city manager. And you'll have to understand, the Lubbock City Council hires only three people. The, the city council and the mayor, we don't hire the police chief. We don't hire the fire chief. We don't hire police officers. City manager does all that. We hire the city manager, or we, you know, when I say we, I mean the, the mayor and city council and the city secretary and the city attorney. Those three employees are hired by the city council. Everybody else is hired by the city manager. How many employees did you have at the time? I think we had about a little over 2,200 in that time frame. And that counts uh, LPNL. That included LPNL. Uh, right. Uh, now, one of the things that uh, people are going to be wondering about you, because in the years that you spent as city manager, you were not out seeking the spotlight. I think that's a gross understatement. I think that's uh, a very uh, gentle way of saying <laughs> avoiding it like the black plague. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now you've got to change gears a little bit. Let's talk about uh, in your view, uh, as far as uh, possibly serving on the Lubbock County Commissioner's Court, uh, Leanne, give us a little background on your education. What, what, what do you bring to the table? My undergraduate degree is in finance, and I got that from the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. And then from there, my MBA is from Millsaps College, which is in Jackson, Mississippi. It's a private private university college. And then following that, I went on to work on a PhD at Mississippi State University at Starkville. And I got through all of the coursework. And just like everybody else, I did my dissertation proposal. And I worked on it for so many years that I finally said, I just cannot finish this dissertation and continue to work full time. So work one, and I completed PhD candidate, but I am not a PhD. Oh, well, it seems to me that you're grossly qualified now, folks. I I need to make sure that you understand uh, what's happening here today. Uh, I, I don't. I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that I am a supporter 
of Leanne Dumbolt, the Lubbock County Commissioner. I've worked with her for four years. I've never seen anybody uh, as quick with a financial statement or a budget as Mrs. Dumbol uh, was as city manager. Uh, and that was her responsibility to put all that together. Unfortunately, uh, she also had the tough job of overseeing a time from 2008 until 2012. Those are the years that I served with her on the council that uh, we were in the grips of the greatest recession since the Great Depression. Uh, we were to the point of having maybe, I, I remember you telling us one day in an executive session, you said, I'm trying to find the money to make sure we can mow the city parks twice this summer instead of once. And at the time, we had 80 city parks and we're paying over $4 a gallon for gasoline. So, I, I mean, there were some really tough times. But during that time, work continued and there was continual process made uh, by the city under your leadership, um, such as uh, uh, more water, more streets, more 70 year concrete streets. Uh, there was still a lot of money spent and a lot of things were done that were basically needed to be done, right? Absolutely. I think doing the Lake Allen Henry pipeline was probably the number one project. And then number two right behind it is buying the water rights from Boone Pickens in Roberts County. That was essential to our survivability as a community. And, of course, our at the time, our water treatment plants were teetering on the edge of basically <laughs> failing and, and not being able to, to correctly uh, process water for human consumption. So there was a massive new southeast Lubbock County water treatment plant built. And uh, and also, I, I might add that during that time, you found the money uh, uh, to do some reworking of the Bailey County well fields up near Muleshoe, which were beginning to fall into a little bit of disrepair. Some of the a lot um, of disrepair. Was, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of the capacity of the water wells up there were down, and uh, so. But all of that's been corrected. Uh, why do you want to be county commissioner? I have been working for Ronnie Keister, who is our tax assessor collected. He's collector. He's elected. And I've worked for him for the past three years as the finance manager. So I have paid particular attention to what the county has done on a financial statement basis. Now, since I've been in Lubbock, not only have I analyzed what the city did over 10 and 20 years, but I also kept a close eye on what Lubbock County was doing over the same time period. So watching this for three years and seeing our operating reserves are now one-fifth of what they were just five years ago. 20%? One-fifth. So our reserves are down from uh, down to where they were. They're 20% of what they were? Unbelievable. That's, a, that's correct. And at the same time, if you look at the assessed value in 2004, Lubbock County was at $9 billion. Today it's $22.6 billion, so it's increased by two and a half times. Where'd the money go? Well, it went to voting machines. It went to mistakes on the ME office. And then there was a $7 million technology replacement this past year. Is that still hanging fire? Uh, it's still hanging fire. Um, they're still paying the existing technology provider, plus they paid the new provider. And my understanding is that it's not going to be implemented on October 1, which was the plan that some of it's been pushed to January, some of it's been pushed to April. I haven't seen anything presented to Commissioner's Court, but they may be getting individual updates. But that's just a whole lot of cash going out the door to one-fifth of what it was five years ago. But during this same period, uh, I know the Lubbock County Sheriff, with increasing responsibility for all of these drug gangs in Lubbock County, his budget's been cut. His budget, they struggled last year with putting the uh, vehicles in his budget that he needs. And on gang counts, listen to this number. In 2017... There were 60 documented gangs with 891 members. Now, 
there are 73 documented gangs with 1,438 documented members. Four cartels operate in this county. Right, and they and they operate outside the city limits, many of them, uh, thinking that that might be a safer haven. Uh, Obviously. Correct. Right, yes. There is no haven for them. No. At this past commissioner's court meeting, on a three-to-two vote, they again voted down funding for essential sheriff department equipment. Three to two. Now, uh, the I'm going to take a wild stab at this and say that commissioners uh, Jason Corley and Chad C. Uh, were the two that voted to uh, increase those funds for the sheriff's office. And yes, uh, the other two commissioners and our newly elected county judge voted not to increase. Correct. All right. It's that's that's sickening. Uh, there's so many good places you can spend money in government, and many more bad places that you can spend money in government. But anyway. We'll just have to wait and see. Time for a break here this morning. We're visiting with former Lubbock City Manager Leanne Dumball, who this morning at 11.30 will announce her candidacy for the Republican primary for the Lubbock County Commissioner's Court. And uh, we'll be back. We've got a lot more questions. And if you've got some questions, just shoot us a text or give us a call. And we'll be back. This is the Chad Hasty Program. I'm Paul R.B. Welcome back, everybody. The Chad Hasty Program, I'm Paul R. Bean, and our guest this morning in studio is Leanne Dumbo, who is announcing for Lower County Commissioner this morning at 1130 at uh, the Courthouse Annex, the Old Lubbock National Bank building at 916 Main Street. Bank One of, of America. A, 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 right. Well, yeah, and before that, it was <laughs> Lubbock National Bank. And, and, uh, and, and by the way, they had many lovely uh, exhibits in that bank for years and years and years. The Majin family uh, decorated the interior of that bank. It was gorgeous. And, and still is a very mm -hmm. nice building, but belongs to the county now. Something else taken off of the tax roll. Uh, uh, let me, uh, I, I, I get different signals from, uh, from folks at the county. I asked one county official, was the county broke? And he said, oh, no, we're in good shape. I asked a Lubbock County Commissioner, a newly elected county commissioner, and he said, yeah, we're broke. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's some folks that are trying to tell a story that it's not as bad as you think it is uh, because uh, the money, some money has been committed but hasn't been spent for some of these projects. But that's, isn't that kind of whistling in the dark a little bit? And it's just not being totally honest. Uncommitted reserves in the general fund are $13.6 million, and they've got about another 12 in cash above that that is committed. My problem with committed is you're either committed, you're going to spend it, which means it's not available to cash flow, or you aren't going to spend it, in which case you need to uncommit it and get your reserves back where they ought to be. It can't be both. And they've known this since they got the financial statements. And I keep getting these around your elbow answers. Well, we can always uncommit it any time we want to. Well, then do so. That's like, right. do it tomorrow. Right. But they're not going to do that, obviously. No. no and the, going to do that. the fiscal year we're in right now, it ends at the end of this month. The budget that they adopted for this fiscal year shows that they're going to draw down another $6.7 in reserves to make this budget work. Now, whether that actually happens, considering how their monthly reports are prepared, I really couldn't speculate. Right. Uh, we're, we're, got, we're going to be short on time in this segment with you. Can you just stick around for a few minutes after 10 and so we can wrap a few things up in case we don't get them in before now in 10? Yes, sir. Uh, Paul, the 2008 recession wasn't the worst since the Great Depression. The 1980s recession was much worse. Well, it wasn't on me, but I'm glad it, uh, Paul, uh, while you have complaints about the newspaper, I have a complaint about a particular commercial on your station where a dental company offers a care package that is not good 
with third party uh, it, it, this, uh, there's some muddled here which I can't read makes us West Texans sound like rubes. Well, they are always trying to do that to us. How much time we got, Jody? Let's uh, go ahead and take the break now. Uh, and there's a question here that we want to ask uh, Leanne, and I will ask that question in our next break. Uh, remember the Lubbock AJ owned by Austin American statesman, liberal crap. This is the Chad Hasty program. I'm Paul Arbeen. Welcome back, everybody, to the Chad Hasty program. Another from 535 Prefix. Bill McKay cut the sheriff's department last year because he thinks he knows more about safety. That's crazy. Puts all neighborhoods at risk. This is the Chad Hasty program. Paul Arbeen will be back after the break. Stay tuned, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the uh, Chad Hasty program. The final hour, Leanne Dumball, uh, the former city manager. Uh, at the city of Lubbock is uh, our guest this morning. We've asked her to to hold over so we could uh, ask her a couple of questions. That we, we're getting lots and lots of questions uh, on text. Uh, you left the city. You were terminated. Uh, somebody wanted to know why. Well, that's a good question. I'm not real clear on that either. But I will say that the council changed from a very conservative council to a more liberal council. I'm not liberal. I won't build dog parks when there's no funding for it is a perfect <laughs> example. I won't do projects that aren't in the budget. I am into 10-year street maintenance at $10 million bucks, and that didn't suit everyone. And like I told the folks the first day I was appointed as city manager, this is the first day of the end of my career as city manager in Lubbock because it always comes to conclusion. Absolutely. Another caller. Who are you running against? Well, the answer to that's pretty simple. Bill McKay has not said whether he's running or not, but until he says he's not, I'm running against Bill McKay. Right. And, of course, technically right now, I mean, after you announce today and I guess file all the paperwork, you're running, you don't have an opponent until, I think he said later on in September he'd make an announcement, but uh, but we'll see. It, do you expect other people to come out of the woodwork maybe and, and, and seek this job? People always come out of the woodwork and mm -hmm. seek the job, and I would expect to have an opponent. And right. the bottom line remains what is needed on the court is public finance expertise, ability to analyze, to do business in the light of day. No more secret squirrel budgeting, which has been their practice for many years. And so I will remain the best candidate regardless of who comes out to oppose me. I want our listeners to know that I am a supporter of Leanne Dumball. I will be a contributor to her campaign. Uh, and I will work to see if she can be elected to the Lubbock County Commissioner's Court because I have uh, watched her for four years uh, uh, take a budget and turn it inside out and wring it dry and get every stinking penny out of it that she could possibly get. Leanne, thank you for coming in this morning, and uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, 11.30 this morning at 916 Main Street, you will have the official announcement. Yes, sir, I will. Come join us. 